Well, I had bone marrow failure in 1988. It was called severe aplastic anemia. And if any viewers out there have ever heard of the boy in the bubble, uh, yes, I had that disease. I was the boy in the bubble, if you will. And so as a result, I couldn't produce blood. Uh, and at that time, I was dependent on blood transfusions. And one of those was an uh, expired platelet bag that should never have been given to me. It had no therapeutic benefit whatsoever. And it also came from a donor who was infected with hepatitis C. Now, we said that there could be thousands of Australians are. who are in your circumstance. Do we know exactly how many? Well, we, we, the estimates were 20,000. We know that a 2004 Senate inquiry, uh, the Australian Red Cross uh, admitted that there were as many as 8,000 in their opinion still living. And the concern then was, of course, they hadn't been traced by and large, many of them. We've still been asking the Federal Health Minister, Greg Hunt, how many have you traced? And we're still not getting any answers all these years later. Mark Ward, you too received tainted blood and in the process being infected with a number of illnesses, including HIV, hepatitis C, as well as others. And now the UK is having a judicial inquiry into this scandal. What do you expect to learn? Uh, as, a, as an activist and campaigner, I've, I've, I've learned an awful lot over the years. And I think the, the biggest uh, issue with this is the, the, the ongoing cover-ups. There are, as you said in your intro, there are criminal elements. Um, perverting the course of justice is one. Um, but also I think that the biggest issue that people really need to hear is, is the, the human cost of all of this. It wasn't just that you were infected with virus or viruses. It's the stigma that people live in complete fear and terror of people finding out, uh, you know, including their own families. It, it, it's just this nightmare that you exist in. And of course, as you get older and you survive, you, your health does deteriorate. Charles, you're nodding. You yeah. clearly agree with what Mark's saying. There yeah. has already been a parliamentary inquiry here in Australia. Yeah. Did it not get to the heart of what you want to know? Oh, well, here's the thing. It cost taxpayers a fortune and victims had to sacrifice the rights to privacy. Greg Hunt and his predecessor, um, I forget her name, sorry, uh, but uh, um, Susan Lay, uh, they completely ignore it. They're indifferent. I mean, they're supposed to uh, coordinate a formal apology because of the impact this has had on 20, 000, estimated 20,000 Australian families. Did we get that? No. We've been here for years. The, you've got David, David Cameron, the former British Prime Minister, and now Theresa May, apologising in Parliament. I wrote to Greg Hunt, would he do the same? And the answer is indifference. It's not going to happen, it doesn't seem so. We've got more victims, they've got three times our population. I think this smacks of the problem of the whole of healthcare in Australia. It's, uh, they, they've lost touch with us. We want a health minister that can actually be a mascot for patients as well as a lawyer, you know, as well as that's what he's become. He's just a lawyer for us. What would you want a judicial inquiry to ask? Uh, well, there are criminal aspects of this now. We've learnt from the UK. I'm now learning from Mark some elements which are really troubling, including potentially children uh, with haemophilia being experimented on without permission, and that's a crime. And a host of other things, uh, including knowingly giving uh, blood from donors they knew to be infected or uh, in their own records didn't want them to donate and went ahead and gave it to patients anyway. So there's lots here that we'd like a judicial inquiry to investigate. Mark, is there evidence that authorities knew that the blood transfusions in the UK were tainted before they gave them? Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was born in 1969, and in 1970, a research paper entitled Abnormal Liver Function in Haemophiliacs, Hepatitis B, CMV and Epstein-Barr, EBV. Um, and the research showed that we were ha being affected, uh, haemophilia patients were being affected by these viruses, and the research was l long ongoing across Europe. We picked that research up here in Australia, I might add, and we've got plenty that we'd like to uh, provide to a judicial inquiry uh, because we feel it's time. And we do have more victims. It's important to understand that. We've got more victims here and we've had no proper investigation into this. We really need to do it. How many victims are you in contact with and that are supporting this push well, for a judicial inquiry? Well, you know, we have lost... Uh, I've campaigned for them for two decades now. Unfortunately, I, yeah, we've lost a whole, a whole lot of people, but we still have many out there. But importantly, We've got their loved ones. We've got children now that don't have parents because of this. And, and so it's for them too. It's, it's, it affects the whole family. You've got generations affected by this. I, I buried a friend of mine just recently. And uh, yeah, you know, his mother was with us today and it affects everybody. It's never going to get better just through silence and indifference. We need to get to the bottom of this. You talked about 
confidentiality agreements. Do you need permission for any victims who've signed those in past years to be able to tell their story? Well, they, they, they can't tell about the full nature of their settlements uh, and, and a lot of aspects of that. And, and, and I think that's terrible because, you know, this is, this, is such, this, this is bigger than those sorts of things. We need to hear from them. They need to share their stories. I mean, a lot of these people have got PTSD and other problems. So the code of silence that's been slapped over them is, is part of their condition now. Have all victims received compensation? No. Oh, gosh, no. No, that's what the whole game's about. You see, in, in Canada, it's been $1.2 billion. In, in Ireland, and they've got less uh, victims, it's been a billion euros. England's going the same way. In Australia, it's in totem $7.5 million. So they've done a very good job of containing us and suppressing us. But remember, governments want to try and keep it about the money and make it about, we want money. But you know what this is really about? This is really about answers. Is our healthcare system safe? And I'll tell you this now to any viewers out there. If we don't investigate these things, who's to say the same things won't be happening again? That's why we want the same level of introspection as the British. And also I might remind Greg Hunt that an Australian life is worth just as much as an English one, no matter what their indifference might project. We want that same level of investigation. Mark, bring us up to date with where the UK inquiry is and when it will report its findings. Well, the judge uh, leading it, the chair, has only just been named um, uh, last week. So uh, he takes up his full-time post on the 1st of May. Um, he's going to be doing a lot of reading and, of course, people like myself will be um, sub uh, submitting uh, a lot of evidence. Um, I'm hoping that I will be given the opportunity to give oral evidence um, and work with the, the legal team. Um, and there's just been an update um, literally in the last uh, 24 hours with, the t with regards to the terms ref of reference, um, looking into the suffering that the, the victims have had to live with. And we've been told by the, the judge in his statement that he will be looking at every level of this because there are so many aspects to it. It's not just a straightforward thing. What will this mean to you and will the fact that this report is going to be delivered, do you think it will have impacts, positive impacts perhaps, for your health? I think so, yes, because when you've spent your whole life... Um, but bearing in mind, we had a health minister who said that um, the cost of chimpanzees that they were researching on were too expensive, so use haemophiliacs. So when you've been deemed as being cheaper than a, haemophili uh, cheaper than a chimpanzee as a haemophiliac, where do you fit into society? So with the answers and the, and the truth finally coming out, yes, I think I can, I can live however long I've got left with a bit of peace and hopefully a bit of dignity which every victim deserves. And just finally to you, Charles, what response have you had so far when you've raised the idea of a judicial inquiry here in Australia? <laughs> well, I've got a huge, fantastic response from victims and their loved ones. And but, from the uh, government? Uh, none. It's the same as we've always had. It's complete indifference. And again, we keep reminding them uh, they have to abide by the law and an Australian life is worth every bit as much as a Canadian one, an Irish one, an English one or any other country that's apologised and is actually doing something about what is the worst disaster, medical disaster, in Australian history.